Nee? Yeah, Let's, sounds uh, good. kick this off. Tell us your name, which I've just said out loud, but tell us your <laughs> name, the coffee of your choice, and what camera are you shooting with today? Spoiler alert. I'm uh, Andy <laughs> Braithwaite. I go on Instagram, my alter ego is Andras the Vampire. My wife's Hungarian, Andras is the uh, Hungarian Andrew, so it's just felt like a uh, good place to <laughs> separate that out. Amazing, Plus, yes. I love the light and the shadow, so. Um, <laughs> coffee of choice. I mean, we've just had some Ecuadorian filter, which was delicious, Ooh. a little bit uh, more room temperature and yeah. almost chilly than I expected. Um, some of my mates will know that, yeah, I like to talk a big game with coffee, but also I'm just a flat white guy often as well, so <laughs> picked it up a notch today. And camera, like I'm on my X-T5, it's uh, relatively new to me. This is the third time, I think, I've gone out with it. I was previously on a uh, Sony Alpha A7, and much to John ST's uh, probably glee, it got uh, <laughs> nicked from my boot when I was travelling in Italy, and got that insurance claim came in, so... On the X-T5 now, which is good to be back in Fuji. I've been Fuji shooter for a little while in the past, had the original X100, had an X-Pro1, so it's yeah, good to be back in the family. But um, yeah, still getting, getting used to it, I think, again, and uh, making it feel like that second skin, I guess, so. so it's always a bit of a ramping up period with a new camera, right? Getting Absolutely. to use it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a good learning experience. It's, like you said, it becomes second skin. You just totally. know what to do. Totally. Side, side track, just because every time Sony comes up, John Esty's name naturally just gets <laughs> dropped. So I just wanted to mention that on the channel. If you haven't heard of John Esty, he loves Sony cameras. Uh, but let's park that for now. Let's, let's move on with Andy. Andy, uh, where are we at? What are we doing? Where are we going to go? Uh, currently, we're on the corner of George and uh, Liverpool Street. So I just thought, um, I know that often I will start and walk down George Street towards Circular Quay. It's often a really busy area, especially on a Sunday. but. Mixing up a bit, I kind of love going down into Chinatown. Um, to be honest, I haven't really spent much time there this early on a Sunday morning, so I'm not sure what it'll be like, but I uh, just thought I'd uh, explore it. I know it's a lovely evening spot, so let's give it a go in the morning. Let's go. Yeah, let's sounds do good. It. Oh. So, XT5, new camera. Yeah. Um, not, this is a, not that this is a camera show, this is a you show, but how does it feel to have a, a different experience? Because you. You had a GR before this, right? I do, yeah. I still, I still love my GR. Um, as you know, it's been in repair twice now. I'm about, <laughs> to, about to get it back for the second time. And I loved it because it really, it was a very different way of shooting, which, which I quite enjoyed. It opened up some things to me a bit. Obviously, with no viewfinder, it meant that you were kind of a lot more snapshotty style. So it's kind of good being back, having the, the Rico off and not accessible and being back with, uh, you know, going through that viewfinder there as well. So it's a... It's a good change, but there's some things I miss about the GR. I did love the uh, quick nature of it, I guess. And yes. I think that it, by because I wasn't doing the viewfinder, I was sometimes ending up doing things that were more kind of pointing upwards. Um, kind of, you know, makes the subjects almost more heroic. And one shot particularly just out the front of Town Hall Station, I remember I probably did it quite quickly. And by the nature of it, I was shooting up with the buildings behind. And it was just a different perspective that... Uh, as a tallish person, I think it was nice <laughs> to sort of change things up a little bit. Uh, and the other thing I really liked with the GR that I kind of wished I could do a little bit more with the Fuji was they have the C settings for all of your all of your uh, custom settings. Custom, oh yeah, yeah. So you could just flick it on the top dial and it would immediately switch a lot of different things. So I kind of had one that was when I was planning to do snap shooting, one that was a little bit more, I guess, ninja and, and exposure highlights, and I could kind of really ah, quickly change okay. a lot on the camera. And it's kind of here, but it's a uh, less, the, the options of what you can change at once, I guess, are minimized compared to that because right. it's also manual, which is amazing, obviously. Um, but yeah, so it's an adjustment, I suppose, getting used to. Um, a different yeah. uh, shooting experience, I yeah, guess, Yeah, that's right? it, that's it. So yeah, love for both. But figuring this out, getting it back into being, as I said, I guess my second skin and I did little things like I changed the Q button on the back here. It's oh, obviously yeah? usually for the quick menu. I've changed that to be my back button focus. Oh, just because nice. it's okay. like right under my thumb when I'm kind of holding. So just felt like I can quickly um, quickly get things happening. But um, yeah, I mean, it, like you said, any new camera, there's that teething period when you're making it uh, the extension of your brain, I suppose. And then when you get there, it just feels so good, right? You That's just, it. You can That's just it. point and know yeah. exactly yeah. what you're, you know what you're doing for. I'm just trying to figure out where we are. We might actually go... Sure. I'm just, I'm just disoriented. I've been talking and not paying attention, but I think I think down this direction. No problem. I often we're, we're quite we're... like this corner here as well, actually. I feel like this it's... This corner here? Well, I mean, not right now, oh, but, right. but you do, you do <laughs> okay. kind of get some nice light, and I think okay. just the gap in there kind of makes it a little bit more of a good hanging spot. But 
We were joking around a lot about this one before we, we walked out that you're um, similar to Ben, you're going to struggle yes. <laughs> to multitask. Multi and, I'm a uh, single tasker. <laughs> Well, I'm envious of you because yeah. I, I wish I could single focus on things most of the time. <laughs> but um, so we also spoke about which we are currently doing as well, uh, different shooting or different camera experiences and what you get from each camera. And the GR, obviously, you said you know a very quick and very much point and shoot experience, which enables you to do different things, yep. which you probably can't do as much with. Um, a camera like that, yeah. it's slightly more noticeable, a um, bit more manual when it comes to operating it, which yep. forces you to slow down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, any, any other camera you've used before that you love and you just kind of maybe miss the experience or? I mean, I did, I did love the original X100, like okay. the very, very old school one. And again, for similar reasons why I think I love this, but the fixed focal length and not having a choice, I think, was always oh, yes. a really nice thing to get out with. And again, I guess the, the GR has that too. At the moment, I've only got this 23mm lens, uh, which is 35 equivalent on, um, on this frame. Fuji. Which I think, again, I, li I like, especially as a new camera, forcing myself to get really used to that one thing. But um, I don't know, there's not necessarily a camera that, I, that, I've, that I've missed and loved, but I think it is nice to kind of force yourself through the different choices. And again, on the Sony quickly, I know that a lot of people, they get a lot of grief for the menus is always the, the big <laughs> complaint. Again, once I was using it for quite a long time, it, it was never an issue for me. I feel right. like, as we sort of said, you end up kind of getting it built into your brain and it just becomes the tool that lets you do what you need to do as long as you understand right. if you spend enough time with it, I guess. No, I completely get that. And I am still learning with this. I felt like the first time I went out, I tried uh, auto ISO, something I never really use. I tried it uh, last time I went out. I thought I'll give it a go and definitely use it error. But I had that auto ISO set up, I think, as a um, max shutter speed of, I think it was uh, one over 200, maybe. And as, as a result, like as John would say, backstreet bangers, they all kind of looked good on the, uh, on the back of the camera. But um, that home, I think, I think the shutter speed was just too low for what I usually shoot. Gotcha. But it was nice to, I actually went back and looked through a whole lot of old photos and looked at things like how I had everything set up and it just, yeah, so now I've kind of gone back and I'm rocking the uh, manual ISO a little bit more um, and I make sure I've got those shutter speeds up kind of more where I, where I like them so I can do things quickly without nice, overthinking yeah. it. Love the way you think about that kind of stuff. Um, what, are you, what are you looking for? Which way are you going to go? I'm trying to remember where we are. It's mostly ah. what I'm looking for. But, um, but I think, again, I think if we kind of head down this yeah, way, yeah. yeah. Um, kind of looking, I guess, for, again, obviously light. It Lights, feels, like, yeah. feels like the easy part that we um, all check out. Fans over there, viewers. Yeah, that's it. By. that's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Paid them earlier. Um, yeah, light, but I think it's probably just the space for context, I guess. and. Space for context, tell me more about that. So, I feel like there's, there's got to be some kind of, I guess, interaction or interplay, I guess, in, in a photo that, that I like. Oh. Whoa, did you oh. run, it's like right in the shoulder blade. Quick uh, little break, not I am minor, alive. Minor shoulder surgery I required. Might need, yeah, I might not need shoulder surgery, but sorry, let's pick up what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, context when it comes to what you're looking for. Yeah. And we can walk, sorry. Yeah, um, no, now, now I'm nervous on your behalf. No, there is an unstable okay. ground just to stay look out. I'm um, really good at this stuff, but uh, it's a struggle <laughs> as I try to balance everything. Un, uh, unfinished streets. Um, yeah, I guess context. So I, I, I often look for interplay, I guess, which feels like a, a no-brainer, but I kind of look where more than one thing, I guess, can come together. And that interplay can be really obvious stuff. Okay. Um, it could be like, obviously, you know, the really obviously novel, you know, you see someone looks really, I don't know, crazy hat or whatever it might be. There's a thing that can obviously immediately give you, there's a opportunity for it to interplay, but it's never enough by itself. Like I'm not someone who'll be like, oh, look at that crazy outfit, I better snap a photo. It's always got to be the thing that it works with. Right. And similarly, I guess the, uh, uninterestingly novel, I think, can also be part of. Oh, sorry, uninterestingly Interesting novel. Uh, no, non-novel, like non novel um, okay. like, very, like the very normal, the mundane, I suppose, the mundane, can, okay. can often be a thing there as well. And whatever it is, I guess, as long as there is one element that I think then can play with something else nicely to create an interesting photograph, I guess, is what I'm looking for. So yeah, so if it was a person again, interesting hat, it's just that that not enough as a photo, but the interesting hat with a great background or interesting light or whatever it is might be. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of looking for, for what a thing is that can let me then explore how things can play together, I gotcha. suppose. 
Would you, I'm just thinking about you know, the photos of, of yours that I've seen, at least the ones that you share on Instagram. Um, where would you put your style of photography? Is there, is there a bucket you can put in? Do you feel like you do have a style that's unique to yours or a specific I don't know, look I, that you have, like a, think, a visual signature, so to speak? I think, I think by nature of doing anything with enough, like if you take enough photos, you can look at the collection and be able to identify a style, I think, of what you probably prefer to shoot and what you like shooting. I like to think I probably do have a style that I prefer, that I really, my, my favourite stuff is probably of a certain style. Which is? <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I guess, okay. So at the moment, there's, there's a few things that I'm really loving. I love, okay. I love things to feel a little bit ominous, almost. Okay. Like, I don't know, I mean, I feel like Sydney's a beautiful and light and blue city and everything else. But when I look back at my photos and there is sort of a, I don't know, like a bit of a threat in it, I kind of, I kind of quite like that. I'm not okay. quite sure what it is. It's not to say anger, it's not like I'm shooting in King's Cross of people who are aggressive or anything like that, but there's something that feels like it's of a place, but also a little bit more, I don't know, filmic or a little bit more like something you might not see in an everyday city, but you right. might see in like the stories that get told in a city, sure. I suppose. So I love that. Okay. I'm also really enjoying geometry a lot at the moment. I try and find interesting geometrical patterns that kind of aren't immediately understandable, like not confusing, but you kind of look at it and have to think about it a bit more. Um, and my favourite stuff, I don't know, I always feel hesitant to say, I mean, I don't like the idea of photos tell a story because I think that they don't. They can provide context to a story. Uh, if there is already a story, I think you can build on that. Like if it's documentary, for example, it can help unpack a story so you understand it. But what I like the most in my photos that I'm really happy with, and this might sound too arrogant, but <laughs> it's good enough that someone can look at it and then want to tell their own story from it. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, like there's... Does one... this tie into... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Does no, this no. tie into... Um, the gallery story we were talking about this morning where... Kind of, I guess, kind yeah. Of? I think, yeah, that's, that's a part of it. I think, so we were talking earlier, I um, had an exhibition at the beginning of last year for a whole lot of photos I've done uh, around the Mardi Gras, so the kind of streets around Mardi Gras during the, during the parade but not of the parade. I think by nature, I think in the ominous thing probably as well, you kind of get some characters that when you isolate and take them out of that context of, of where they actually are, it can feel like there's just intrigue, I suppose, of what that story might be. But I guess what I, what I, what I really think when I think of that um, tell a story yourself um, idea, there's one of my favourite photos I've taken, which to be honest isn't that amazing and most other people don't seem to like it that much, but it was one of those days when I hadn't taken many photos, I couldn't really be bothered, but I forced myself to get out and uh, wander around and take some pictures. And I got one by chance that I ended up loving, and I partly love it because if I didn't force myself to go out, I would just never have had that photo, and I'm a big fan of you make it happen, you get what you like. But in this particular one, there's a guy in a full white suit, and he's got a big white bag and a big white hat, and he was singing to himself, and he was just, I don't know, a bit of a character, and he happened to walk into a suit store, and then on the way out, I sort of snapped the picture of him, he's looking at the camera, and you can see the suit sale in the background and him in his white suit, and I look at it and, and like to imagine that someone might think, might want to tell a story about that photo, I suppose, and again, as I said, I don't think that photo that. can tell a story, but if it invites someone to want to, I, I love that. But... Um, they can be few and far between to find those moments, I think. Interesting. It's, it's something that hasn't really crossed my mind very much at all, if I'm being honest. The uh, idea of somebody looking at your photo. Obviously, right now, what we see in the real world is, well, in the real world, we, we share our photos on a social media platform, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And because we're bombarded with so many photos and everything else in life, it's just a quick like or a brilliant, awesome, good job, great photo. Like There's, there's not a lot of context yes. to yeah. the reason why someone feels that way. Um, so to, for you to, exp uh, to experience that and express that is, I find it quite interesting to people actually slowing down and um, looking at a photo and trying to imagine what was going on in that particular moment. Yeah. I love it. So deep, it's a, man. It's good fun. And I mean, as I say, it's harder to get. And I think that's why, back to your style question, I don't know, I think if you picked three photos of ra at random of mine from my Instagram stream, I might get lucky and they might be like, oh yeah, they look like a consistent style. <laughs> but possibly also very likely is you'd pick those three random ones and they're like, oh, they kind of look quite different. And I think that's because what I know I really love, I do you know, find it is more infrequent to, to come across it for myself. But I also always love getting out there and doing it. And so as a result, I'm constantly taking them. I still love the process of you know, experimenting even and 
um, trying new things. And like when I was overseas recently, I took some that I think very much so are not my style usually, but at, the mo at that time I was very conscious of doing more layering and trying new things. And so I think, I don't know, if, if, if I had bigger aspirations to be a world named, known, you know, guy or whatever, absolutely I think having a really consistent style is important. Um, but for me, I think I'm doing it mostly just because I love doing it. And so if I get some stuff that, that, that builds to my style, I think if there's some stuff that I know that I love that cr creates my style, that's great. But if I'm taking other stuff along the way, that's kind of fun too. Mm, I love that. One of the things I love about this channel that I love personally is um, hearing different stories. It's uh, like we said, one-on-one -on -one time with a photographer and actually if you want to take a photo, go yeah, for it. Like, yeah, you saw, I saw your eye move. <laughs> um, the, your thought process around why you take photos or why you go out and I want to want to take photos because everyone's got different aspirations in life and um, want to achieve different goals. And your goal isn't, as you said, is not necessarily to be the next Magnum photographer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so you're doing it more enjoyment. So I want to unpack. And, yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. Oh no, then I was just going to say. I think as well, I should I should caveat that. A lot of people just do it because they love it too and still build a style. And mm -hmm. I think like, you know, we were briefly mentioning Knox Birdie before as well, and I've only met him the one time, I think he's amazing. I wouldn't say he's necessarily out there thinking like, how can I refine my style and very focused on his style. He's just really, he's really, he's really amazing at what he does and he really loves what he does. And so as a result, I think style comes naturally. Naturally, yeah. Um, so I think, point. yeah, so I think ultimately there probably is a style fundamentally in there. I'm just too loose to, uh, to make it consistent. <laughs> Um, I wanted to rewind a couple of minutes and ask sure. you about, you said you um, were having a hard time getting out, but you force yourself. Can you explain to us, I, I talked to photographers here there, and I, I actually had a friend this morning, he's like, let's go out, let's, let's go walk and, and take some photos. I, I've just been really struggling to get out and don't feel like it. I think it will help to go with someone. So have you, by the way, again, at no, any please. point, if you need to I'm go and take photos. I'm looking in case, but there's nothing. Nothing the there? Okay. No. I'll just pan around a little bit. <laughs> when, you, um, when you feel that way, which sounds like you have at least at one time, yeah. how, do you, how do you force yourself to get out of the house? Or how do you force yourself to kind of snap out of that um, mindset of, ah, I just don't really feel like? Well, at that time, and that, this was quite a few years ago, and, um, yeah, it was a while ago, and I, at, the, at that moment, I was actually at the X100 at the time, I made a blog, basically, that was only for myself. That's all I really cared about was wow. just for me. I didn't really share the link around. And I just set myself the goal that every Sunday night I'd post a new post of a series of pictures. And at that time, it was Friday afternoon. I got off early from work and all I wanted was to go home. But because I'd kind of set myself, I guess it's a micro goal, and I knew I had nothing that week, <laughs> it made me think, you know what, okay, I'll just spend an hour or two getting around. And so that at that particular moment, that was really helpful, I guess, to have just the acknowledgement of, of what I wanted to, to get out of it and, and force myself. Other times, and probably more recently, I don't know, I also, I feel like I, warm, I have to warm up a little bit anyway. And so when I get out, you know, I kind of get that moment and it's like, I sometimes have that fear of there's always something happening. There's probably 50 shots right now somewhere around <laughs> Sydney and it can almost be that overwhelming moment of like, okay, I'm here on the corner of whatever and who knows where that's happening. So I like to remind myself, I guess, of the opportunity that's out there. Not that I'm missing, but that there's always something going. Um, and if I can make the time to get out and do it, I'll probably come back with something I like. And even if I don't, I always enjoy the process. The process, yeah. Like, I think on, on Tuesday, last Tuesday, it was World Mental Health Day, and our work gave us the day off. So I did go out and took yeah, some photos. So and to be story, honest, it's awesome. it wasn't really that much that came out of it that day. It wasn't a particularly fruitful day. But I did... I did genuinely love it and I posted a very dorky video of myself walking around <laughs> enjoying Mental Health Day and I know that I've heard from other friends and stuff that they just almost envied the fact that I got to go out and do something yeah. so valuable with that day that I had that, uh, that inspired me so yeah I feel like I can't ever force myself to go out but I do find that when I do I always get value Enjoyed from it. At least the process we set, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I think some of us go through these, these moments of time where um, we just don't have the mental energy to do something and it's always a how do I snap out of this maybe it's not a snap maybe it's uh, building a habit over time of just going out or talking to someone about it or like you said in your case having a, a blog post just for yourself yeah yeah and I think and I think and that's actually why I started my Andrash Instagram account was mostly to find 
Well, I guess it wasn't just for myself. It was part of it was I did want to create something that was just for finding community, which worked, because obviously now I've met a whole lot of you guys, which is amazing. Um, but I did it again mostly for myself, and I think it's, it's hard. You always end up, you know, now, like probably nine months after I created the account, I do know that I'm followed by a lot of friends and people that I respect, and so I do probably think more about what they're going to think than if, if I had just done it completely for myself. Um, but ultimately, again, I think that I know... I think sometimes I take stuff or post share stuff that I hope other people will like and sometimes I know that I'm doing something, I'm posting something or taking something that probably won't get that much engagement but I love it and it's matters to it. me it's, it's my that, archive too. Yeah, your, your goals are separate to wanting to get engagement on Instagram or uh, Yeah, media. totally, totally. Your goals are more driven by your own happiness. Absolutely, and again, I'm not going to lie, it's obviously... You know, I look at the numbers of course and you know, everything <laughs> else and... But, um, but it's, it's, not, it's not why, I guess. It's not why. So tell me about, I've seen Sally do that. You just do a little bend the knees and- Crouch. Crouch. What's, what's going on there? I don't know. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even realize it. And I was actually- <laughs> You've done that twice now. <laughs> taking photos with my wife and she was like, oh, there it is, the Andy Braithwaite crouch. And I'm like, I didn't even realize. So I don't know. I don't actually, I haven't really thought too much about it, I guess. Is it because maybe, you're taller than the again, rest of I guess us? Maybe that, that I'm taller and- You're going to come down to our level and- <laughs> Yeah, I guess, no, I don't know about that. I mean, you're, you're not exactly short yourself, mate. But um, I don't know, I feel like maybe I'm, I'm leaning in, I guess, when, I, when okay. I know I'm doing the moment, I, um, oh, I lean into it. Your body language, is, you now love it, okay. But, um, um, but that's, that's a in, inbuilt behavior that I don't even realize I'm doing probably. Some younger photographers in the making. <laughs> So, I would love to pick up this <laughs> conversation we had before we walked out. Yeah. And again, please continue to do what you're no, doing. No, I'm, I can multitask apparently, multi uh, despite can you? what I okay. said. Um, hi, Hello. how are you doing? Much? Oh, no, Not we're yet. Thank Too you so early. much. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Um, so, you were, you had a gallery, an exhibition, I should say. I um, did. A couple of years back? Um, yeah, so beginning of last year, it was, um, again, a culmination, I guess, of I'd done the Mardi Gras street photography for a few years and I'd always wanted to have an exhibition and I'd always kind of felt like I'd wait for that right moment and at, um, at uh, some point it would happen. I kind of was always thinking it eventually will happen. Um, and it wasn't, obviously, because you can't just wait for these things to happen. You've got to kind of make them happen yourself. And so with much encouragement, I did just pull a pin and self-funded it, but um, put on an event in Oxford Street. Um, and we were talking earlier about the fact that it was terrifying, you know, like I got to, uh, we were opening I think at 6pm on the Friday night, or Thursday night even, it was 5.30pm, it was pouring with rain, I was just thinking nobody's going to turn up, and I was so nervous that I was just saying, oh well look, if no one comes I'm, I'm not going to do a speech because that would be humiliating. And you know, 10 to 6 rolled around, more nervous, 6 o'clock doors opened and there was a flow of people, by 6.30 it was getting pretty busy and 7 o'clock the room was full. And it was so just good. probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. And mostly, again, it was a lot of friends that turned up, or friends of friends, but just having a room full of people who were interested in engaging and talking with me and the work and telling me the things they saw in it was just something that, uh, I mean, I did make some money back with sales, but to be honest, the cost itself was completely validated by the experience the that experience it gave itself. me. So yeah, I loved it. And I'd highly recommend to anyone that it's always going to be worth um, getting your getting your um getting your work exhibited right getting your work exhibited and getting out there and being with other people um you didn't like that i heard <laughs> <laughs> um so if yeah. we were to break it down a little bit more so you had uh, a gallery that you booked out yes sorry yeah so oh, it was okay. just above um uh frida's cafe frida's in oxford street okay and so yeah, we, we booked out the space and we had it ourselves for a week, which was lovely. Um, There's then, obviously costs so you don't have to yeah. mention the numbers, but obviously it costs some money to yeah, use the place I, out. I wanted, I wanted everything to be really good quality and everything as well. Sorry for a second, I'm just gonna... Sorry, <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, cost yeah. associated. Yes, cost yeah. associated. Sorry, it takes me a second to respond. <laughs> that's okay. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> to help um, with that. Yes, yeah, so there was some cost associated. I wanted to get everything printed nicely. Obviously, it was kind of a representation of myself. So yeah, of I did get everything printed up well and um, nicely framed and everything else. 
Um, I think curation is always a hard job that I never really thought about and I had to get down because of the costs to a lower number. I think we put 10 to 15 on the wall, but then because I can't help myself, I had a separate section with 50, maybe five by sevens kind of collage sort of thing as well. And to be honest, I'm really glad I did that because I obviously knew what I really liked and thought would be impactful, but then having that huge scale gave people so much to engage with and chat about and interact with. So I think, yeah, I really um, got a lot of value out of, out of the conversations that it generated. Um, and again, obviously, I felt really fantastic because everyone was telling me they liked my work, which is nice. <laughs> it's always a good feeling to have. And um, you're able to get some of the costs, I guess, returned to you by yes. selling some of the prints. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and which was a success to me, like, you know, you said two thirds of your prints were sold. I think so. Yeah, yeah. about two thirds. I've still got one third sitting in my store in my home. But uh, <laughs> so if anyone is interested, yeah, that's it. Let me know. <laughs> the duds. Know. <laughs> I mean, there was one definitely that was basically a big picture of some guy's butt. So I mean, I wasn't surprised that's if someone didn't want to hang that on a wall. Under, but, in a uh, wall. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But, um, but yeah. And the other thing that we did talk about, I love. Uh, I've got a whole lot of magnets printed at the last minute. Yes, that one. Which yeah, it was really nice because I think again, especially with the opening and with a lot of my friends there, everyone kind of wants to support you. But um, it's hard sometimes to support a friend when the support is an expensive print. Um, oh, look at these, I might just try and cross over. Um, and so giving them an option that was more accessible I think was great. Now I've got 50 of my photos on people's fridges around <laughs> Sydney. So that's it's great yeah, marketing. It's a nice, nice feeling. I mean, look, we'll see how we go. But so are you aiming for the. Just the three matching girls, three matching but I think girls? we might not get to that point before of. Um, Interplay, like yeah, at the yeah, moment, there's enough. not much happening on the street, and I don't, so, I'm not just going to do it for the pure nature of the fact that they're matching. So while we've, um, I guess, I've wrapped up that discussion around the gallery, um, love to ask you about a couple of things I've seen. One would be that you took a, a pretty close-up photo of the couple who were out there. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you've, like, I've known you for quite some time now. You're warmest heart, like gentlest human on the planet probably. Have you ever had any issues? Any Anyone saying, no, don't take my photos or anyone push back? I have a little bit. I don't often, it depends, I think, a lot. I think in that instance, I liked the light and it just felt, I felt it was okay. When I do do it, I do always engage and smile, usually sometimes beforehand, but usually immediately afterwards and I always say thank you. And I have occasionally had people ask what I'm doing and everything else and usually explain that it's fine. I've had, I haven't had any problems doing that. I've had problems, as I think we all have, with stuff that wasn't even what someone thought was happening. Oh, gotcha, yep. I had um, a guy stop me once and he said his girlfriend was really uncomfortable because I was taking photos of her. And I was like, well, I don't. <laughs> and I'm very apologetic. And he was cool about it, but then he said, can you, sh can you show me your photos? And so, of course, I did. And there was no photos because <laughs> that's not what I was doing. But um, so I've had, had those interactions. And I do find I try always to be very just smiley and, and saying thank you and, and open and honest about what I do and try as best I can not to hide it, I right. suppose. Right. But, yeah. but um, yeah, there's definitely been times when I've been interacted with. I had someone on that mental health day flip the bird at me as they walked through the frame, but you know, I think it's all just part of the process. <laughs> um, but I, just, I generally just try and be very smiley. Sure. I think and sometimes just... I try even with, the, with my attire, like I've got a jumper. I like to usually be in darker colors. It helps you kind of blend in. But at the same time, that can be intimidating. So I have a black jumper with a pink fluffy llama on it. And I think it's mostly blending in, but with that little fluffy llama of like, no, no, I'm a friendly guy. Like, I'm, not a, I'm not a weirdo, I hope. No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, what was the other question I was going to ask you? So one about uh, getting close up. Oh, and then children. What do you, is there a, like how comfortable are you taking photos of children? Do you ask permission? Do you, like, what are your thoughts there? Because uh, this is a yeah. fairly controversial um, subject matter, I guess. I mean, to be honest, despite the fact that we just crossed the road because I saw um, the three together all dressed in the same outfits, to be honest, I very, very rarely take photos of children for, for exactly those reasons. And I don't know, I'm hyper aware of it. I've got a, um, a fluffy white dog. And even that, like when I'm walking the dog by myself and I've had kids come up to me and I just get really paranoid because I can tell that a parent somewhere is probably thinking, what's that grown man doing talking to my child? <laughs> um, so I'm, I am very aware of that. And I think, okay. Yeah, so I do, I do generally try and avoid it. But if, if I do do it, um, like I've taken photos of, of some, a group of kids playing with some birds and things 
but I'll usually smile and make eye contact with the parents first to make sure that I'm kind They're of comfortable with it. I'm threatening, and I've never again. I don't do it heaps, but I've never really had a problem, I guess, okay. with it. But good, good, good. And it's like I said, it's a fairly, fairly controversial, yeah, um, subject matter. And I've spoken to Julie about it, and obviously. Her point of view is quite different, and I'm a parent myself. Um, I don't typically take photos of children, um, not because of the controversy, just because it's just not part of my style of photography. Yeah. Um, but un until that changes, I guess I don't have nothing to have anything to worry about. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, where are we? Uh, where are we going for now? Well, I thought down here, partly because I think it was not that busy in Chinatown. Um, yeah. Down here near the ICC, I do know that the South by Southwest Sydney is oh, that's right, I think starting enough. today. Yeah, and so I thought that there might be a bit of action around here. Lots of people out. Um, it is, yeah. I think it's hard here because it's big and wide, and you kind of I do prefer, I guess, background interest. Um, yeah. Usually when I, when I shoot. Okay. Um, background interest is in like a, a backdrop or. Yeah. Whether well, I guess. Uh, because because often I'll try and shoot wider. I mean, this is 35 now, but usually I shoot with 28. And so you always end up getting a little bit of background in there. And I kind of feel like I want that to add to the story. Oh, I just feel like it's part of it, yeah. I think. And yeah. I think with here, when I shoot, because of the nature of the openness, I'm probably going to get a lot more just empty background, which feels a bit more boring. So <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, often come down this bit. But I do like there's a section just here to the left where you often get kids dancing and stuff. Well, oh yeah, kids, yeah, I said, yeah. But teenagers. Teenagers, yeah. The TikTok so, dancers, yes, of course. Yeah. So yeah, there is some stuff around here, but we don't know. We'll see how we go today. Let's see how we go. While we're walking that way, uh, I'm going to ask you a typical question I have asked everyone: Is there anything that you'd like to chat about that I haven't asked you yet? Um, which I think was going to be the exhibition, as you mentioned. <laughs> we did, we <laughs> so did, we've talked we did about, talk that. about that. I've used that bullet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, I don't think. I mean, I think. I think the only thing that I had also been thinking about, I guess, was I, I think you need to be, as, as, as a street photographer, I found it's often quite a solo exercise. And I think we've talked a bit about community and finding other people and yeah. kind of getting that response, I guess, to your work. But I think that as an individual, I think it's really important to be, firstly, your biggest fan, like be proud of what you do and thankful and glad of, you know, love your work essentially but also be your biggest critic. Um, okay. I think that you should always be looking at stuff that you like and that inspires you. It doesn't mean copy or grow from or whatever, but I think when you do live in your own world of I'm great, um, it's easy to not grow. And so I think always look for the inspiration or the influence that you like, and then kind of be that critical eye of how have I achieved that? How could I better achieve that? Um, learn from it essentially. And I sometimes feel like inspiration is both inspiring and crippling because you, know, you kind of look at it like, oh my gosh, I could never do that, or there are leagues ahead of me. But I think, um, oh, no. Missed it? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's important to be, yeah, really proud of yourself and do, do love your work and be right. you know, kind to yourself, but also be really critical to learn and grow so you don't just uh, stagnate, I guess. That's really important. That's actually genuinely wonderful advice. Um, I wish there was a, an easy way to gather feedback, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. first of all, it takes a lot of courage to go ask for feedback. I yeah. think uh, a lot of us are probably afraid of what the outcome is going to be. Um, also, if the person who's providing the feedback doesn't have context or doesn't have the soft skills to deliver that feedback, it could really hurt someone. Yeah. Um, you know, if I didn't have thick skin at this age, uh, I, I would have probably <laughs> had a couple of really low moments in yeah. my photography or even in my career in, in my life. So, um, but feedback's really important. You're right. If you don't get real feedback and if you live in this kind of bubble of I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great, you're never going to change yep. um, and you'll always stagnate. So, yep. I'm glad But also you... do be kind. And I think that's something that uh, it's easy to forget as well is that, yeah. you know, like I said earlier, I do it because I love it, and whatever reason you do it for, you know, remind yourself that it's probably because you love it, yeah. um, and let that be an okay reason to keep doing it. But in spirit of growth, you know, also be a critic. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Might need to cut that one out. So, 
What's next for us, Andy? Where, is there anything you want to go take photos of? This is very interesting for me. I don't know, yeah. I kind of, I kind of like this, but to our conversation before, I feel like there, there could cute, be some yeah. opportunity here, but um, I also might be boring. It'll be a, it'll be a boring linger, because I, I am a waiter sometimes. I do. So yeah, that's the, I guess that's the, what's your, are you a, a fisher slash waiter, or do you? Yeah, I, I do mix a little bit, like I think, um, I think I was Julia who I heard say on your thing as well that she follows sometimes and nothing really comes out of it and I absolutely find that and I think I followed uh, these two ladies carrying a whole lot of colourful balloons the other day and I, for 5-10 minutes I was waiting for something and again nothing, nothing, nothing really happened. Out of it. So I don't really follow so much but I do, often I will wait but then equally I get very impatient so I'm probably <laughs> 10 minutes most at a place and then I'll kind of move on and, and see what's there. I do find a lot of the stuff I end up shooting is in motion, which is why before I was talking about the shutter speed, I have to make sure I'm fast enough because I'm usually you know, moving around moving and around. making it happen as I go. So, okay. But um, but something like this, I feel like there would be a great opportunity here. I think with you, it probably would be boring to watch, but I probably would kind of circle it for a bit and figure out where that interesting angle might be. And I'd probably I don't know four or five photos I really liked that were yellow and red. Less dominant colours, and so that was a really nice observation because usually, as I said, I mostly shoot black and white. So when I realised that, it kind of made me go out a few times with that different eye, and yeah. I think that's half the battle sometimes is what are you looking for when you're out, and it's great just to be open to whatever comes, but when you know something specific, it's much more easier, I guess, to get stuff that you're really happy with. So I've kind of, back of my mind now, often looking for yellows and reds, particularly together in a scene to make it happen. Um, just again, to get some layer of consistency. Behind us is a yellow Here Porsche. Here we go, yellow Porsche. With a pinkish, that's, reddish that's, background. That's actually where I parked today. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, Couldn't can find I get a, a better home, spot, please? so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not yet, not yet. <laughs> this is the income from photography, right? This yeah, is, of uh, course, yeah. From that, from that exhibition, yeah. Yes, so exhibition I, I, got your Porsche. I was in the negative uh, $1,500 from, from the uh, <laughs> excuse, but I made bought a Porsche from that negative. <laughs> Oh, good luck. It is a busy Sunday out here, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Those Sydney flies. Sydney flies. For those of you, if you're seeing us uh, wave our hands, we're not, we haven't gotten mad. There's just a lot of flies at the moment. It's uh, definitely a summer day here in Sydney. And uh, flies are out, and Sydney flies are very stubborn. They don't like to sure go are. away. They just hang around for hours. Yeah, like a confident, fast thing. confident little, very confident scumbags. And these are the, um, the TikTok kids we we're talking about. Yeah, maybe we'll just wander down here. Quickly. Want to go up there for a little bit? Yeah. Because um, yes, because I think like I do love a crowd, but I feel like. I don't know, maybe it's not much happening in the crowd yet. So crowds are your thing, right? This is what you're I guess so. naturally attracted to. Like sort I of. think, I guess for two reasons. One, because I feel like if there's something that I just like the framing of, I'm likely to have someone come through that's going to be good. And I think the quieter it is sometimes, I think we were just talking earlier today about you can wait for ages and still not be fruitful. And I think at least in the crowd, you're more likely to get that interplay you need in your yeah. scene. Um, but also, I think again, I think it gives me more opportunity for interplay. I think when there's when there's a, when there's a group of people, and those stories, whether they're actual stories or stories you want to tell yourself, I think when there's um, a lot of people around to make things happen, I think you get more stuff. Yeah. So I just love this wall. And I haven't actually come out here at all before. This is actually really cool. It's a really good spot. And it seems like you have enough subjects to um, potentially yeah. make it even more interesting. Do you think subconsciously you like to be in the crowds because you have a higher chances of walking away with the photo that you like? Probably. Probably. This is something that I've been thinking about a lot lately uh, around why I do some things that I do and it's just because I'm short on time so I like to be in situations where I have a higher possibility of making a photo that I'm actually going to keep as I think opposed you're right. to... Yeah, I mean I think 
I sometimes joke that for me, comedy is a numbers game. Like, tell enough jokes, you're eventually <laughs> going to do some good ones. And people forget the bad ones. <laughs> and I think, to be honest, sometimes my shooting style is like that. And it's often I know, I take a lot of photos that I know probably I'm never going to use and whatever else. But as I sometimes I think just the, the, the brain feedback of, of hearing the shutter go, you yeah, feel like there's that yeah. little dopamine rush. So I probably do do a numbers game often, partly just because I enjoy it. But then to your point, I think, again, sometimes that can result in, in uh, greater photos. And I'd rather take too many and have a lot that I have to chuck out than be too slow because I'm not in that mindset, which I think for me, again, I have to kind of ramp up to it. If I'm in the mindset, I'm not going to miss something. Whereas if I'm kind of just really looking for the perfect shot, I probably will miss it. So, yeah, so crowds, I think, give me the opportunity to shoot more, to get my head in more, and then kind of get the stuff that I really like. Okay. Love it, man. That's... I think about this stuff probably too much. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I shouldn't. But it's, I'm glad that I'm not the only one who thinks that way. I definitely like to go in locations where my style would naturally come easier to me. I don't have to wait too long or walk around for too long. But then I see this and I go, I'd like to come out here and try this. Yeah. Even though I may not get anything I actually like, but I think it will give me an opportunity to, um, to learn some new skills, to try something different. And, yeah you know, maybe apply that somewhere else. I did also just shoot from the hip just then as well, which I do do sometimes as oh, well. Yeah? I'm not, you know, very mm -hmm. tyrannical about always viewfinder, and I think particularly, probably again in crowds, it does sometimes give an opportunity when in motion to kind of see it, but um, again, I'll just kind of hold the back button focus and snap away, which, so. No worries. Which again, I guess, yes, in some senses is spray and pray, but um, I think it's, it's I deliberate, th I it's think deliberate that's, spraying. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think that's spray and praying. Yeah. I think, again, that's probably the Rico energy coming out in me <laughs> from uh, kind of knowing I wasn't looking and kind of just pointing. Yeah, it's uh, uh, applying something you've learned from a different camera and trying to make it work with this camera. And I totally get that. Totally get that. There's these mirrors, did, it, yeah. did you ever try anything with these I've mirrors? I've tried, I've never really, there was one I got actually with these mirrors but further down and it was during COVID and the sign on the screen it said system error has occurred and it just felt very <laughs> natural of, of the moment. But um, but again, I've tried and I feel like, I don't know, and I've talked to other people, I think I think Tim I've talked to as well has tried around here. I've Tim tried Sada. so many of these mirrors, I just can't get anything yeah. that I'm really happy with. Yeah. They yeah. look really Good cool. Good in theory, yeah. but yeah, something about it, it's... Uh, you, you would think, People at home, you would think you'd be able to get something with these mirrors, and I personally haven't been able to. I don't think yep. Andy has any either, but no, maybe one. Not really. So even and, then, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a shame. My friend, is there anything else? I asked you this one time, but uh, one <laughs> going last once, time. going twice. Going twice. I don't think so. I think. Um, so have you covered everything that we wanted to I cover? I think so. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming out, man. I always enjoy chatting to you. You're just. When I, and I said as I generally mean it, you're like one of the kindest, oh, thank you. most humble people I know in Sydney. Um, I mean, the community is amazing anyway. The photographers here that I've met and speak with regularly, they're all lovely, but everyone, uh, including yourself, is just very humble and kind. So thank you for coming out. Really appreciate, appreciate your time, it. man. Uh, and uh, see you soon. See you soon. Thank you.